Hi, my name is Chris Cox and I'm a cybersecurity instructor here at CDSE. I have here a computer that's about to get infected by ransomware. You can see there's a seemingly innocent file on the desktop, in this case pretending to be a music program. Let's click on it and see what happens. So right after we click on the link, we see an unexpected pop-up message that seems kind of suspicious, a little bit unrelated to what we're expecting. What's actually happening right now is behind the scenes, the ransomware is starting to encrypt the files. You can see suddenly the load on the memory and even the CPU usage is climbing up because the computer's working even though it doesn't appear to be. And that's always a warning sign when the computer's doing something that you can't see or that you didn't expect. You saw our icons right on the left-hand side of the screen. They very suddenly changed as well. And what happened is that all of our critical files, our family pictures, our resume, and everything else was just now encrypted and the extension was changed. At this point, we cannot access these files because they've been encrypted by the ransomware. As you can see, it has a double extension because the association was actually changed. And even if we go ahead and rename the file in order to try to remove that secondary extension, it does not actually decrypt or give us access again to the file itself. This is being done across the entire computer where many of the files, not just those on the desktop, are being encrypted and cannot be opened without the encryption key as we discussed previously. Now at this point the files have been encrypted. This is the indication that it's completed that particular operation. And this is where the name Jigsaw comes from. The icon comes up and it informs you that your computer files have been encrypted, everything that you have, and offers you an option to recover those files. This particular version of ransomware gives you 24 hours to pay $150 in the digital currency Bitcoin in order to retrieve the key. However, every hour that you don't pay the ransom, it deletes one file, which actually gets more and more as time goes on. It also provides helpfully information on how to purchase the bitcoins if you don't have them already and how much they expect to receive. What will happen, as with many forms of ransomware, is that the system will generate a randomized one-time bitcoin wallet in order to receive the funds. That makes it very, very easy for the attacker, using their automated means built into the ransomware, to determine if you've actually paid or not. What we will see in a moment is a countdown is going to appear to give us that one hour time frame at which point the first of the files will be deleted. Okay, and at this point the countdown has begun. All of the files that are encrypted are visible here so it can show you which specific files it has already encrypted. You can scroll down and you can see it continues to go on. We have certain program files, we have uh, personal files, we have things on the desktop, and so on. And as it deletes the files, it will mark it here that it's done so. This is the randomized Bitcoin address that's been created by the program in order to receive the funds. And at that point, if the button was paid, was was clicked at this point, it would check the, the wallet to see if there's actually funds in there. If that's the case, then within several minutes the key will be revealed and the files can be decrypted. If that is not so, then it will detect that and let you know that you haven't, quite, you haven't yet made the purchase. The first thing we're going to try to do is to bring up the task manager and see if we can kill this process to stop it as it is. If we can do that, that may stop the files from being deleted. However, that would not recover the encrypted files. Now you can see there's actually no process running that says jigsaw, ransomware, or any number of things. Of course, the ransomware, the malware writer, wants to make it as difficult as possible to find or to recover from. But one clue here is that you may see things that you don't expect to see or are not installed. In this particular case, we look at drpbx.exe, 
with the description of Firefox. This computer does not have Firefox installed and it does not have Dropbox installed, which this is meant to emulate. So that's our first clue right there that's very likely what we're looking at, particularly when you see just how much memory it's actually running. So we're going to click and we're going to end, try to end the process and see what happens. You can see that it does kill the window, however it hasn't brought anything back and it hasn't actually stopped the countdown as well. Let's try to restart and see if that countdown comes back. Okay, now that we're back, we saw a few things. Number one, our background has changed. And number two, the file that we renamed has actually been deleted. And Jigsaw is back. As the warning message had said, there are several safeguards built into the program to essentially punish the user for trying to stop the process. So let's see if the countdown has resumed or started over and perhaps we bought ourselves a little bit of time. Now we can see that the timer has started over again, which seems like a good thing. However, let's view our encrypted files. We can see those safeguards that they mentioned did in fact come to pass. Trying to stop the program and restarting the computer deleted most of the files that were threatened to be deleted. And that will continue from the point that it left off. By now we have a greater understanding of what ransomware is and how it can impact your organization. We also know what to look for and what steps we can take to prevent infection. I want to thank you for spending time with us today. As always, you can visit cdse.edu for up-to-date information and other resources. Until then, I'm Chris Cox reminding you to stay safe.